Hello friends, in this video, let us understand about armature reaction in DC machines. So, any DC machine have two windings, one is the field winding and other one is the armature winding. One is the field winding and other one is the armature winding. So, the purpose of the field winding in DC machines is to produce the main field flux whereas the purpose of the armature winding is to carry the current. So, the only purpose of the armature winding is to carry the current but not to produce the armature flux which distorts or you can say weakens the field winding which is what we are referring to the armature reaction. So, the purpose, our purpose is only to carry the current and uh, for the armature winding and for the field winding it is to produce the main field flux. But what happens is when the armature winding carries the current it produces armature flux let me indicate with phi a and uh, this is with phi f. So, it produces a flux due to the current carrying armature winding we are having the armature flux and this armature flux has some effect on this field winding which you are referring to the armature reaction in DC machines. So, before proceeding to the greater details of this armature reaction, let us understand two accessors present in the DC machine. One is the magnetic neutral axis and other one is the geometric neutral axis. So, when the armature is placed in the magnetic field or you can say first we are having when the field winding is energized we are having a unit, uh, uniform magnetic field. So, when the armature winding is placed in the arm, uh, magnetic field the armature windings or the armature conductors will cut the magnetic field and when they cut the magnetic field a, uh, according to Faraday's electromagnetic induction of law an EMF is induced in the armature conductors and uh, as the armature is a closed coil you can say the uh, current starts flowing and due to the current we are having the armature flux. Now there is an axis or you can say plane when the armature conductors move parallel to the field that is the magnetic flux lines such that there is no EMF generated in the armature conductors that means the magnetic neutral axis is the that axis where no EMF is generated in the armature conductors as they move parallel to the magnetic field lines. So, the magnetic neutral axis is that axis when, when the armature conductors move parallel to the magnetic flux lines. When they move parallel to the magnetic flux lines, no EMF is generated. That axis can be known as the magnetic neutral axis. That means neutral axis, that means no EMF is generated in the armature conductors. And the geometric neutral axis is that axis which is perpendicular to the field, or let me say it is perpendicular to the field axis or stator field axis, you can say. So, these are the two axes we have to know. It is perpendicular to the stator field axis. So, these are the two axes to be known before going to the greater details of the armature reaction. Now, once we have known these two axes, let us discuss these three figures here for this armature reaction. So, let me say this is my north pole and this is my south pole and the armature conductors are placed in between these two opposite poles. So, initially let us consider no current is flowing in the armature conductors and only the field poles are energized. So, considering a two pole machine here, so only the field poles are energized and we uh, can see the magnetic flux lines are uniform and they are symmetrical to the polar axis. So, they are symmetrical to the polar axis and they are uniformly distributed. Now, when the armature conductors are energized, you can see, let me indicate this with the current flowing inside 
and this with dot convention the current flowing outside so from amperes right hand thumb rule so you can witness the magnetic flux lines so you can witness the magnetic flux lines flowing like this so this is the direction of magnetic flux lines so you can see the current is flowing inside and the magnetic flux lines are coming in in this direction and for this the current is coming outside and the magnetic flux lines will be flowing in this direction that means this is how the magnetic flux lines will be flowing in the armature conductors so from these two figures we can say that the so here if i say this is my phi f phi f so you can see this is your phi f and uh, this is your phi a so your phi f and phi a are perpendicular to each other this is my phi a and uh, at this juncture when the machine is not loaded you can see the magnetic neutral axis so if i say this is my geometric neutral axis which is perpendicular to the state of field axis then the magnetic neutral axis coincides with the geometrical neutral axis so initially let me say this is my gna and the mna is also coinciding this axis so now when the machine is running when the machine is running two kinds of flux are pr uh, present one is the main field flux and one is the armature flux so the armature flux what it does is it superimposes with the main field flux and it disturbs the main field flux the and that effect of disturbing the armature flux that effect of disturbing the armature uh, disturbing the main field flux due to this armature flux is known as the armature reaction so nothing but in one line you can say the effect of armature flux on the main field flux can be stated as armature reaction what it does is let me indicate this is the current flowing inside and current flowing outside through dot so what it does is it, the magnetic after superimposition of these two uh, fluxes this is what we are having so the magnetic this is what happens to your main field flux as the armature flux produces more now if we understand clearly actually what is happening here let us consider a single pole machine uh, let us consider a single pole only so let me tell let me say these are the conductors these are the conductors so the current is flowing inside and considering the three cases when the machine is not loaded or you can say when the machine is on no load the armature carries a small current that means as it carries a small current it produces a small flux which does not affect your main field flux when the machine is on no load so when the machine is on no load you can see this is the flux and when the machine is loaded so when the machine is loaded you can see a the armature current the armature carries a large current and you can see a large flux large armature flux so when the machine is loaded and when when this is when the machine is not loaded now if we if i superimpose these two fluxes let me say this is phi1 and this is phi2 so if i superimpose them then i'll get like this so the flux lines if i say this is my direction of rotation this is my direction of rotation and uh, uh, in the direction of rotation the pole tip which comes first is known as the leading it is known as the 
लीडिंग पोल टिप इट इज नोन एज द लीडिंग पोल टिप एंड द पोल टिप ऑपोजिट टू द लीडिंग पोल टिप इज नोन एज द ट्रेलिंग पोल टिप ट्रेलिंग पोल टिप सो इन दिस सीओर यू यू कैन कम टू नो द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ आर्मेचर फ्लक्स इंक्रीजेस एट द ट्रेलिंग पोल टिप इन केस ऑफ जेनरेटर एंड इट इंक्रीजेस at the leading pole tip in case of the motor so this uneven distribution of the flux causes two undesirable effects so one is the this causes two undesirable effects one is the weakening of the flux or you can say demagnetizing of the main field flux and other one is the distortion or you can say cross magnetization so this you can say demagnetization which is weakening the main field flux and this you can say cross magnetization so these are the two adverse effects due to the armature reaction taking place so if we see it via fluxes so initially the gn and mn are coinciding so but due to the armature reaction we we have witnessed the concentration of flux will be more at the trailing pole tip in case of generator and uh, the concentration of flux is more at leading pole tip in case of the so due to the effect of the armature flux due to the effect of the armature flux on the main field flux my magnetic neutral axis get shifted so if i say this is my geometrical neutral axis then the magnetic neutral axis get shifted so the magnetic neutral axis for a loaded dc generator gets shifted in the direction of rotation but for a loaded dc motor the magnetic neutral axis gets shifted in the opposite to the opposite of the direction of rotation so if i indicate it via the phases so this is my main field flux this is armature flux and uh, this is my this is my geometrical neutral axis so the magnetic neutral axis will get shifted and the brush the resultant flux of or you can say the distortion of the main field flux due to the armature field flux we are having the resultant flux as indicating by phi r so the brushes are always placed along this magnetic neutral axis because the reversal of armature current takes place along this magnetic neutral axis so therefore we are placing the magnetic neutral axis uh, we are placing the brushes along this magnetic neutral axis now due to the effect of the armature flux on the main field flux the magnetic neutral axis get shifted and thereby the brushes also have to be shifted so but the prediction of the uh, the prediction of the position of this magnetic neutral axis becomes hard once there is a armature reaction and uh, it would be hard to determine where to place the brushes as we are not able to predict ex the exact position of this magnetic neutral axis and uh, thereby you can witness the sparking occurring in the dc machines now if the brushes are at their previous position so initially initially we are having the magnetic neutral axis coincide with the geometrical neutral axis and if i say due to the armature reaction the magnetic neutral axis gets shifted and we, as we said the uh, the brushes will be present around this magnetic neutral axis and if the brushes are at their previous position then the generator emf in case of generator decreases and uh, the back emf in case of motor would reduce and uh, the commutation would be accompanied by heavy sparking so the commutation occurs at the coils located on the brushes only coils located on brushes only and the coils undergoing commutation come under the influence of alternate poles they come under the influence of alternate poles that means the change location from north to south 
south to north, north to south, and vice versa. It continues. Now, hence the armature current changes its value from plus i to minus i in a very small span of time. Now, due to this uh, change in current in a very small of time, we are witnessing a very high magnitude of reactance voltage that is V is equal to L into dI by dt which comes out in the form of heat energy along with the sparking. So, this heat energy uh, along with the sparking may damage the coils which are going commutation and uh, in addition to these coils, the adjacent coils also may get damaged and burn. So, we have seen the two adverse effects. So, due to the weakening of the plus, in case of generator, we are having uh, the generator EMF is reduced. So, one effect is the generator EMF is reduced in case of generator due to weakening or demagnetizing the main field flux and uh, due to the cross magnetization or distortion of the main field flux, my magnetic neutral axis gets shifted and it will be hard for me to predict where to place the precious as I do not know the exact position of the magnetic neutral axis that by the commutation with heavy sparking is accompanied. So, these are the two undesirable effects, adverse effects you can say caused by the effect of armature flux on the main field flux. Now, in order to reduce the ill effects of this armature reaction, we are going for two, uh, two, uh, two methods, one is you can say uh, using the compensating winding using the compensating winding and the other one is the interpoles. So, for small machines, no special efforts have been taken to reduce this armature reaction, but for medium sized and large sized machine, we are going for these two methods, one is the using of compensating winding and other one is the interpoles. So, we can also shift the brush to the magnetic neutral axis, but uh, it would depend on the load it would also depend on the direction of rotation. So, in order to overcome those limitations, we are going for the compensating winding and the interpoles. Now, the compensating, uh, so uh, the main thing is here, the armature reaction is only due to the armature flux. So, it is mainly due to the armature flux. Now, what I do is, I will neutralize this armature flux by introducing a winding in the series with the armature. So, by introducing a winding in close proximity to this armature conductor and if I place that winding in series with the armature and uh, let me see it carries the current in opposite direction as that of the armature conductors. So, it carries the current in the opposite direction as that of the armature conductors it produces a flux in opposite direction to the armature flux which effectively neutralizes this armature flux. So, the primary duty of the compensating winding is to compensate the uneven distribution of flux or to maintain the constant value of the main field flux due to this compensating winding we are going to maintain the flux at a constant value. So, this compensating winding is basically placed on the field poles. So, here I will place my compensating winding in series with the armature such that they carry the current in opposite direction to the armature current and thereby they produce the opposite flux which effectively neutralizes the armature flux whereby it maintains the constant value of the main field flux. So, constant value of the main field flux can be maintained by using this compensating winding. And now, the interpoles are the auxiliary poles which are narrow and they are broader at the base. So, here the interpoles are wound, so you can see they are connected in series with the, this is, if I say this is my armature, so they are connected in series with the, if I place another interpole here, they are connected in series with the armature 
and uh, they also carry the opposite current to that of the armature and thereby they nullify the quadrature so if i say this is my direct axis and this is my quadrature axis the interpoles effectively nullify the quadrature axis armature flux and uh, thereby it basically also pro uh, it also neutralizes the uh, uh, quadrature axis armature flux along with that it provides commutation voltage so this commutation voltage neutralizes this high reactance voltage and thereby it improves the commutation process so the primary duty of the uh, interpoles is to improve the commutation process and the later job is to neutralize this quadrature axis armature flux so the wind the interpoles are wound in such a manner that the magnetic polarity of the interpoles will be same as that of the succeeding pole so this magnetic polarity will be same as the succeeding pole in case of generator and in case of motor the magnetic polarity should be equal same as that of the preceding pole so this is all about the armature reaction we have seen on no load condition on loaded condition and we have superimposed and we have seen the unequal field distribution and we have seen what is uh, magnetic neutral axis and uh, geometrical neutral axis and we have seen how the field flux or uh, field flux lines are moving they are moving uniformly and symmetrical to the polar axis when the field winding energizes and we have seen the armature flux and uh, in this sphere we have seen how the magnetic neutral axis gets shifted due to this armature reaction so this is all about the armature reaction in your dc machines i hope you understood well please subscribe to the channel thank you